Okay, so we're all set up, ready to go when it gets dark. Um, there is a bit of a moon out, but hopefully it'll be um, out for most of the night. Uh, I've got the rig set up, the Ascar 65 PHQ, and this time I'm going to go for some dark nebula, some dusty areas. Um, one is the Chameleon Molecular Cloud. Uh, that is up kind of close to the South Celestial Pole. And then I'm actually also imaging an area that is doesn't really seem to have a designation. Um, it's not far from the Vela Supernova region. And it was just this area of dust that I saw that I thought looked quite good for imaging. Um, and it reminds me a bit of a, kind of a bit like a mountain. I think um, it's got a bit of HA with it as well. So I'm gonna capture some HA tonight while the moon's up. And then once the moon's sort of gone down a bit, past the house and hopefully sort of setting uh, switch back to some LRGB to try and finish uh, these targets off so uh, it's a little windy at the moment but I'm hoping that'll drop it's supposed to be a cold we get you know temperatures dropping tonight because we've got stuff coming up from the south so um, it should be clear I hope nice and clear all night fingers crossed Okay, so I thought I'd start by uh, opening up Stellarium to show you, you know, where the Chameleon Cloud Complex is in, in the uh, southern sky. So this is the view from my deck, and uh, we've got the Large Magellanic Cloud over here, and we've got the Milky Way running up here. So if I just uh, turn on this grid, you can see this is where the South Celestial Pole is. And if I flicker on the constellations, uh, this is the chameleon over here, the constellation of the chameleon. And I'm just going to turn off um, the South Celestial Pole now that we know where it is and uh, turn on the labels. So the chameleon uh, constellation here, this is where the cloud complex is. Apparently it extends uh, from sort of Carina to Musca to Octans. Um, so it's sort of quite a, a reasonable sized area. Uh, what I'm going to do next is uh, go into Nina and go into the framing um, and we can have a look and see uh, what this area looks like in the night sky. Okay, so we've got Nina going um, and we've got the South Celestial Pole down here. Uh, this is actually the Doodad Nebula. Uh, over here is Burns 142, which I did a video um, uh, with when I was talking about the rotator and also Weekend at Burnies. Um, I'll put a link to that um, video if you like up in the top. And this is the sort of area that I'm um, aiming for here. Now the Chameleon Cloud Complex uh, involves three areas, Chameleon 1, Chameleon 2 and Chameleon 3. This area here is Chameleon 1, this is Chameleon 2 and the area that I'm imaging is Chameleon 3. And I'm just going to zoom in a bit, uh, we're just going to increase the uh, zoom in here on the framing wizard. Okay, we've zoomed in a bit uh, closer. Um, Chameleon 1 is off to the side here. This is Chameleon Complex 2 up here, and this is uh, number 3. And this is roughly my framing um, with the ASCAR, which is 416 uh, over here, 416 millimeter focal length. And I've got the um, camera uh, parameters in here to give me the right size framing. So this is sort of what I was going for. Now, the Chameleon Complex um, 3 it apparently doesn't have any um, star forming going on at the moment. Chameleon Complex 2 does and Chameleon Complex 1 has the most star formation, but apparently this is sort of a bit devoid of any star formation at the moment. And um, I'm just going to zoom in one more time. Okay, so we've zoomed in closer, again showing you uh, the framing in the area that I'll be imaging with. I'm just going to move this out of the way. Chameleon Complex 3 has been sort of divided up into some names of various components. If we just zoom in here, there's an area here which is called the Thumbprint Nebula. We've got this which is called the Talon Nebula because it sort of looks like three, I think, talons sort of sticking out uh, over here. And then this bit down here has been called the Rippling Flames Nebula. So I'm hoping with my framing uh, that I will be keeping 
all of these three components into um, my, my final image. So once I had finished imaging the chameleon complex, I wanted to look for another dark nebula because we still had um, no moon. Um, so the skies were relatively dark for my Bortle 5, 6. I mean, realistically, I probably should be imaging these dark nebula in a much darker sky, but you know, it is what it is and you have to deal with what, uh, what light pollution you've got as to where you live. So here is again, you know, Burns 142 for reference, and this is the area where the chameleon complex was. And if I just zoom out, we um, travel over to sort of into where the Milky Way is and head towards uh, the constellation of Pupus and um, the gum uh, molecular complex. And we can see in here, this is the um, sort of bubbly looking Vela supernova remnant. And um, when I was looking around, I sort of noticed this structure over here and uh, had a look at it and we'll just move it out of the view there and thought, oh, that looked like quite a cool structure. I, it didn't have a name on it. I couldn't find a name, although I have subsequently found it. It does have a designation, but it kind of looked like a nice kind of dusty mountain. So I just called it myself, labeled it the dusty mountain for imaging purposes. And I did a framing sort of about like this. I had no idea what it was going to look like. Didn't know. I hadn't seen any other images of it because I didn't really know what to look up. And um, I wasn't sure how much of it was just going to be sort of dark dust and therefore require LRGB and how much was hydrogen or whatever. So just had a go at imaging. Now I have subsequently found out this does have a designation and it is um, BBW56. And it's, um, and let me just check the name. It is of the catalogue by Brand, Blitz and Wootaloot. I'm probably mispronouncing that, but anyway. Um, so yeah, BBW56. There's not a lot of images of this. Um, and uh, so I thought it would be quite cool to, to do. And I subsequently learned how that does have a name. Okay, let's uh, run through these images very quickly about uh, what I did and lessons learned. So um, I'll show you, as I've shown before with these dark nebula, um, they look pretty disappointing. Again, with these, just this absence of cells and you can't really see any obvious structure, although there is a little a hint here of the thumbprint nebula. But you can see there's a, a quite a bad gradient here and that's related to the fact that I am shooting in a bottle sort of five, six, probably closer to six and I was shooting in the direction of the Auckland City Light Dome. So um, I think, uh, well, one lesson learned is don't shoot dark nebula down here in my, where I live down here. I have to wait till I go to a darker site because I think I'm missing out on a lot of uh, detail. Uh, the green was somewhat similar here, uh, but once you um, sort of apply a DBE, here you can see this is the red with the, um, uh, I actually did an automatic background extraction on this one. Uh, you can start to see more definition turning up in, in this here. Um, and uh, this is the luminance. Again, you know, there's a lot more sort of structure turning up. And I went through and processed it in the usual way. I think um, got to sort of a point at one go like this where it was all very, very dark, but you can actually start to see the sort of the, the structure of the dust. And this was my final version, which I just flipped the orientation a little bit more with um, with how I was showing you on the uh, when we're looking at Nina and the Framing Wizard. Um, not too bad. I mean, considering where I am, uh, I think I am missing out on a lot of a lot more detail in this because I am shooting down here in Auckland at in the direction of the Auckland Light Dome. Okay, now we'll move on to the um, Dusty Mountain Nebula, or BBW56. Uh, you can just see the outline of it here, but um, disappointing as most dark nebula appear to be in your initial stack. You can see there's a terrible gradient here, and that is, again, because I'm shooting in the direction of the light dome of Auckland City. Anyway, it is what it is. So um, this was what the luminance looked like. The red's slightly more defined, if you like. 
Blue and green were very disappointing and the hydrogen alpha here had a bit more detail in it and I kind of underestimated the detail that was in this and thought it was going to be more contributing to the edge of this nebula. I think this was mostly made up of dust, etc. I subsequently realized that was my mistake and came back and reprocessed it, which I'll show you in a minute. I wasn't sure how to, to use this, so I added it to the red channel like you do with a galaxy, which is probably completely the wrong thing to do. It didn't really add too much to the red channel, but what it did achieve was once I had um, processed it further, this is what I ended up with my initial processing, and I thought this wasn't too bad. There's a bit of um, sort of dust here and a bit of detail, and the hydrogen alpha seemed to be um, adding this sort of nice red glow to the surface. I posted that on Astrobin and said, this is my image. I don't want to, don't know what it's called. If anybody knows, um, can they let me know? Several came back and said, yeah, this is BBW56. It's not that frequently imaged. Um, and I had a look at their images and suddenly realized I was missing out on a lot of detail in that hydrogen alpha um, stack. So I went back and redid the hydrogen alpha stack here, which um, now you can see there's a Quite a difference between what's in here, excluding the stars, try and uh, subtract those in your mind. But you know, there's a lot more detail going on here in the HA. And effectively what I did was I then applied that to um, to the, uh, if we come back here, so this is the image similar to, to this version without the stars, and I added it, I increased the saturation a bit, because I knew that applying the luminance would pull back on the saturation a bit and then added the luminance and um, suddenly you can see all this detail pop out and it really does look like more of a mountainous range and ended up doing a couple of versions, this one with um, brighter stars, this one with more muted stars. This was what I ended up as being my final but going through this video I'm, I'm kind of tending back towards this one again because I do like the fact that you can see the stars and they got some nice um, star colours. The last image that I did, I thought, do something easy, point it at a nice bright um, uh, narrowband target, and I went for Carina. And uh, I quite like the fact that this filled or overfilled the field of view. Uh, the hydrogen alpha stack looked really nice, it was pretty clean. Um, and uh, these were only three minute subs, which is, I think, more than enough for Carina to give yourself a decent image. Oxygen 3 and the Sulfur 2 were both 5 minute exposures, um, probably overkill, but that's what I did. The total integration for this was only 9.5 hours, but um, uh, this is what I ended up with. Here it is here, um, uh, kept a little bit of the green in there, and uh, I was quite pleased with the amount of detail that was um, lurking in the background here as you sort of scan around this um, image on more... Uh, high power uh, stars. Now I did drizzle this, um, I, that's something else I should mention with these images. I did drizzle them because I have got a little bit of undersampling going on. The stars were looking a little bit, the small ones particularly, once you pixel peep, were looking a little bit on the on the blocky side. Um, they look pretty good once you drizzle them, so that's a, a good way of getting around that problem. Probably didn't need to drizzle them because, uh, but I do like to zoom in on the stars. They're fairly muted in the background anyway. Um, so, and there was one other interesting feature now. Uh, my wife Lisa, she seems to be able to identify very quickly weird looking things in the nebula. And I put it up on the TV and she had a look at this area and immediately said, hey, there's a witch in there. Um, and this is what uh, the witch looks like. So you've got this sort of scary witch face uh, in a black shroud here. And um, so we got the Witch Head Nebula and now there's the Witch in Carina, which uh, from now on I can't unsee in any of my um, Carina images. So anyway, that's um, uh, a few images I've done with the Ascar. And uh, so far I'm really pleased with it. As I said, shouldn't have been doing Dark, dark Nebula uh, in this um, light polluted area, but um, I'm very keen to get it up to Langs Beach and have a go under darker skies, also very keen to have a go with it with the 2600 at some stage, since these images are all taken with the 1600 MM Pro. So look, um, thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, give it a like. If you haven't subscribed, feel free to um, subscribe to the channel, check out the other videos. I uh, really appreciate everybody watching the videos. Thank you very much and leaving comments and I'll, I'll reply to all the comments. 
And uh, until next time, I hope everybody's getting lots and lots of clear skies. Mm -hmm.